Flagship phones are great. They are made of premium materials, have superb build quality, but they can cost $600 and even beyond that depending on storage options. But what if I said you can get something similar for 50% less? Or how about even just a fraction of that cost? This looks better, right? What's up everybody, this is Danny, and today let's focus on the top five budget smartphones of 2016 so far, all between $200 and $300, and let's begin with the best value in the bunch, the Blue Vivo 5. Blue is a company you might not be familiar with, but you definitely should be in 2016 because they are coming out with some incredible phones that are friendly for your wallet. The Blue Vivo 5 impressed me as soon as I took it out of the box. It's a full metal design with beautiful chamfered edges, and it's only 6.9 millimeters thin. There's a 13 megapixel camera on the back and a 5 megapixel front camera. There's USB Type-C, dual SIM capable with LTE, 32 gigabytes of internal storage, and that's expandable by micro SD card slot, a 3150 milliamp hour battery, an octa-core processor with three gigabytes of RAM, and a 5.5 inch Super AMOLED display. That is a lot to say. This phone should seriously cost way more, but you get all of this for just $200, and it doesn't end there. Now, value-wise, this is one of the best because you also get a screen protector, a case, some nice-looking headphones, a USB-C to USB converter cable, and a SIM card ejector tool. It's rare to see that much come with a phone, especially for only $200. Performance-wise, this thing is pretty snappy. It runs a custom version of Android 5.1, but Blue states that it's upgradable to Marshmallow soon in the future. Now, there's no app drawer, and that must be a thing because a lot of these new phones are not coming with one, but if you don't like it, this is Android, so just slap Nova Launcher like I did on it to give it a more stock feel, but you can see exactly how snappy this device is. It is blazing fast. One software feature I absolutely love is that fake call button where you can hit it and in 15 seconds it will trigger a fake call. To get out of awkward situations this easily, this phone may pay for itself way faster than you think. The 13 megapixel camera is capable of shooting some nice images in good lighting conditions and also is decent in low light. The 5.5 inch display is 720p, but before you write it off, it is a super AMOLED display, so you get the incredible inky blacks, vibrant colors, and to be honest, it looks good. It's nice and bright too, so it looks great playing your favorite games or watching your favorite YouTube videos, the speaker is adequate, and the battery can last you an entire day. So if $200 sounds right to you for a brand new phone, you should definitely consider buying this phone. You won't regret it. The next phone I'm going to look at is the Honor 5X. This phone is also only $200 and may be the best spec phone in this price range. This phone features an aluminum alloy brushed metal design and it's really attractive with chamfered edges and some variations on the top and bottom. There's a 13 megapixel on the back and a 5 megapixel camera on the front and it's unique in this price point because it also features a fingerprint scanner. It works really well and I love the placement for it feels natural and it's easy to get to. The one downside of this though is that there's no NFC so you can't use this for Android Pay coupled with that fingerprint scanner. That's pretty sad. This is a dual SIM capable phone with an option for micro SD card expansion to bump up that 16 gigabytes of onboard storage. And what's also unique in this price class is the inclusion of a 5.5 inch 1080p display with 400 PPI and it looks really nice. The 5X is powered by an octa-core Snapdragon 616 processor with 2GB of RAM and the performance is great most of the time. You may get a few hiccups now and then, but it's nothing that's annoying at all. Software-wise, it is running Android 5.1 at this time, but a Marshmallow update is right around the corner. It is running the Emotion UI skin, and while it does have some neat software features like the lock screen shortcuts and switching back to the last app by holding down the recent task button, but the Honor 5X also doesn't have an app tray, so I put Nova Launcher on here to give it a more stock look and feel. The 13 megapixel camera is also decent, producing some nice images, and it can have some focus delay here and there, but overall, the camera is solid. If you're looking in the $200 range and want a 1080p display with a fingerprint scanner, I think the Honor 5X is a winner. The third phone I'm going to look at is the OnePlus X. Now, while it's a little bit more expensive at $250, it is an incredible value for its money. The build quality is every bit as good as a flagship device out there, and I would say it's even comparable to something like an iPhone or a Galaxy device. You have a nice metal frame, chamfered edges, and glass on the front and back very similar to the Galaxy S7. It is a bit slippery and does collect a ton of fingerprints, but it is a beautiful phone. 
For that extra $50, I think you get some things that you don't in other phones of this class. You get a very nice 5 inch 1080p AMOLED display, and while some may think this is a little bit small, I enjoy the compact nature of the OnePlus X. If you like a bigger screen size though, the other phones may be a better option for you. This display is beautiful, bright, saturated, and colorful with deep blacks, and I think this is the best display in its price range. You will not be disappointed. Another thing to note is that this is a phone I absolutely enjoy the software on. While Oxygen OS is skinned very slightly, such as the shell feature where you see your frequent apps, weather, and contacts, is basically stock Android. Customizations are also nice with being able to set a dark theme through the menu, choosing the accent color, some gestures, and app permissions, and the ambient display options, so I really love the software. It is running Android 5.1, but I hope Marshmallow hits this device really soon. The 13 megapixel camera is also good for producing some nice images, but it can struggle a little bit in low light. With its dual SIM capability with a micro SD card slot available to bump up its 16 gigabytes of onboard storage, a fairly powerful Snapdragon 801 processor coupled with three gigabytes of RAM, an eight megapixel front facing camera, this unique alert slider on the left side to mute notifications, which is genius by the way, I think this is worth the extra $50 compared to the other phones in this class. The last two phones I'm going to look at have been out for a while, but there's still some great choices. The Alcatel One Touch Idol 3 5.5 inch retails for $250, but since it's been out for a while, I've seen it a lot less and it's under $200 often, so make sure you check the price on that if you're interested. This phone is unique in a couple of ways. This is a fully reversible smartphone, so you don't have to care which way you're handling it. The microphones and everything just adjust automatically. Also, there are dual front-facing stereo speakers which sound great, and there's a 5.5-inch 1080p display as well, so that makes for a great multimedia experience. There's a 13-megapixel camera on the back and a 5-megapixel camera on the front with a 2,910 mAh battery. The Idol 3 comes with 16 gigabytes of onboard storage but can be expanded by microSD card slot. The software is a custom version of Android 5.1, but Marshmallow should be coming in the near future. The Snapdragon 615 processor does a decent job at keeping things speedy with 2GB of RAM, so if you're looking for a phone in this price range with dual front facing speakers, the Idol 3 is a great choice. And if you want a smaller and cheaper version, there is an Idol 3 4.7 inch available for about $170. The last phone I want to take a look at is the Moto G 3rd generation. This phone has been out for a while, but I still think this is a solid option. The phone starts out at $180, but you should really buy the one with 16 gigabytes of storage instead because you get double the RAM and you get double the storage. So just for a little bit of extra money, it's totally worth it. I've done a full review of this and I'll link it below if you want to watch it, if you're interested. So I'm not going to go into depth, but a few things make this thing stand out in its price range. First, it is water resistance. You can't really say that about many phones in this price range. And the software is basically stock Android and with a few Moto apps to complement this. So this is the only phone right now on this list to have the latest version of Android. So with Marshmallow, you get things like Now on Tap and battery improvements with Doze. And this might even see the next version of Android and with the other phones, you never know. There is also a micro SD card for easy, cheap expansion to augment that 16 gigabytes of onboard storage. The one thing that might bother people is the 720p 5 inch display. It's not the highest quality and the viewing angles are not as good as the other phones and the screen can look a little bit washed out. The thing that may win you back is that that 2470 milliamp hour battery can produce some legendary battery life when coupled with that low powered Snapdragon 410 processor. So if you're looking for a low cost phone that is on the latest version of Android and you want a phone that can possibly last two days on its battery, then the Moto G is the phone for you. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. All of the phones are linked in the description section below if you want to buy them or check them out. Let me know in the comment section which one you like the best and why. Subscribe to the channel for more cool videos like this. And if you want more of these kind of videos, let me know and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.